Hi guys, in my last video I went through my choices over a game engine and I decided that I was going to drop on a game and switch over to Unity. Um, at the end of the video I said that I wasn't really sure how I was going to progress in terms of tutorials and so on. And so in this video I'm going to go over how I'm planning to get started and a problem that I found immediately. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Caroline. Uh, I also go by Rayon in gaming circles. I just started teaching myself game dev a couple of months ago. So right now I have my Unity editor in front of me and having um, now started to play around with it a little bit, I realized that because of my eyesight and having fairly low resolution, I'm going to need a bigger monitor because, yeah, this gets really crowded. So I've gone, I've started with a tutorial that I found on Udemy. So this is a guy called Alex Dev. I don't think that's his real name. Um, and he has got two um, courses here, which is like one course split into two parts, which is the basics of Unity for complete beginners and these are free so I've done the first part of the course and the result of that is this here so if I actually play it and show what it does it's just kind of the beginnings of a, a little platform where we've got a dude here who is of course an onion which I think is adorable uh, you, you can see he's got an idle animation he moves he jumps we've eliminated the sort of like um infinite jump type problem and it doesn't look like much you know if you're just looking at this and you're thinking oh wow you know that's that's pretty shit um but in terms of what goes into creating that there's literally hardly any code this this is 53 lines of code which controls that character and of course the the actual objects in here and i'm so far i'm really impressed by what can be done so quickly you know you just drop a sprite in your scene you give it this rigid body you give it a collider a renderer and suddenly you've got a full game character which has got position and rotation and it's got physics and collision all of that just built in out of the box before you even touch the code so this is this is great stuff so I've done the first part of that course. In the second part of the course, it's going to go on to do like the rest of the game. Um, it's going to be like a um, a platform type game, which is very cool. So I've I've discovered a problem though, and this is something. Well, two problems. This is something that um, this guy has talked about. So this is Mark Brown, a game maker's toolkit, and this is his um playlist where he started talking about learning game development himself and one of the things that he talked about was that he spent several weeks just following other people's tutorials kind of really following along sort of click by click line by line where they would do something on their screen you know like um so like on here you know just go and put a sprite on the screen add a rigid body to it add a collider to it go and you know change a value in here like the gravity scale or something and then in the code you know literally just write the code out as the as the tutor was doing it and he said he did this for several weeks and then he's fired up a blank project in unity and found that he'd learned absolutely nothing so of course I'm kind of similar to him in that I find that I need to do something myself in order to learn so that's how I did it with Mono Game. I watched a couple of tutorials and then I created my own games but I found a problem um, let me show you this channel here so this is a channel called Ziggurus and what he has done has he has created his whole channel is just basically creating tutorials of complete games of these old style classic games. Now for me, this is exactly what I wanted to do as the beginning of my journey was to recreate all of these kinds of classic games as practice projects. So this provides me with a dilemma. If I was to take one of these tutorials, say the Tetris one or the um, breakout type game there, if I was to follow that tutorial, literally click by click, line by line, then I'm going to have a game in my Unity editor which does that, but it's not my game. It's, it's not something I've created myself. And so that makes me really wary because I don't really want to just blindly follow along with those kinds of tutorials. Um, 
And so I've been trying to think about how how am I going to how how am I going to kind of navigate this? So the way I think of it, when you're when you're building games, there's kind of two aspects of it. So you've got sort of the basic building blocks. If you're taking something like Unity, you've got things like sprites, these a rigid body, um, a collider. Honestly, these are the only things I know about so far. Oh, I guess I've learned a little bit about the animator. This is pretty cool as well. The fact that you can just define a state machine in here graphically and it just <laughs> just does all of the transitions between the different states for you that's really quite amazing considering how much work i had to do to put that into monogame i had to create my own state class anyway um but this is all like the building blocks and this is what allows you to create something in an editor such as unity but that doesn't tell you how to create a game out of that so you can create a game object which has got position, it's got velocity, it's got scale, it's got collision. And then you can create a few of those on the screen. And then you've got the building blocks for how to create a game. But how do you take those building blocks and make one game into Pong, another game into Asteroids, another game into Tetris, another game into Pac-Man? These kinds of games are all completely different to each other and yet they're all made from those exact same building blocks so the way i see learning game development for me and i don't know if this is the same for other people but i feel like i need to learn the building blocks first and then i need to learn how to build the actual games themselves now when i was doing this with monogame the actual building blocks of Monogame really were very simple. It just had a few classes, a little bit of an API, and then most of it was like building out my own library. And then what I would do is I would watch tutorials on somebody else having created a game like this. So I watched a tutorial which was in like Lua. I actually watched a Godot tutorial for Pong. And then I thought, right, okay, I've kind of got the gist of it. Now let's see what I can do in Monogame. But again, I don't really want to... I mean, I do want to watch them. I kind of do and I don't because I don't want to copy what someone else has done. So I've come up with a, a playlist for myself here. So I've, I've been digging around looking for some tutorials, ones which aren't too old. A lot of tutorials are several years old. But all of these tutorials in this playlist, these are for the kinds of games that I wouldn't necessarily have done for myself as a practice game. So we've got a clicker here. This is an Angry Birds. This one is a kind of a space shooter, but I'm actually going to talk about that in a minute. That's kind of um, a special one. Um, we've got a 2048 game there. This is, um, I think this is something similar to an Angry Birds with some physics. We've got a couple down here, which are Vampire Survivors. This here, Star Castle, I've never even heard of that game. So these would be good tutorials for me to follow along with. And it's the same with this basic one here. See, I have no interest in platformers. And yet platformers are very often used as a tutorial type game. It's a good way to learn the various parts of Unity. But it's not like I personally would be particularly interested in making a platformer type game. Now, let me just talk about this video. So this one here by a guy called Code Laboratory, what he said at the beginning of this video is that he has spent many, many years creating, he said, hundreds of 2D games in various different languages. And what he learned was that it all boiled down to about 15 different things, some of which are on here, you know, a secret boss, random skins, destructible objects, um, we've got particle effects down there. And he said, once you learn these main 15 things, you can then create pretty much any 2D game out of them. So that is something that I find pretty interesting. And so I might sort of prioritize this video. So yeah, um, but going back to these, how am I going to handle this? So I've had an idea. So I have a part-time job working in a call center, which I work at in the evenings. I do a late shift. So on days where I'm working, the way I tend to structure my day is during the daytime, I will do game dev stuff so of course the last few weeks I've been learning monogame and creating my own games there and then sort of late in the afternoon I go to work and I put in a six hour shift and um, by the end of my shift at work I'm usually pretty tired 
But um, because I do a late shift, the last hour or two of my shift in particular, um, around sort of like 9, 10 p.m., it can be really dead. I might um, only get like one or two phone calls in that last hour. And so I can pretty much do what I want so that I can watch YouTube. So what I'm thinking is I could watch these kinds of videos while I'm at work. So I get interrupted at work. Anytime I get a phone call, obviously I have to stop watching and go and deal with what I'm doing. And it also means that I do not have my Unity editor there. So I cannot follow along. Um, and also I'm tired. It's the end of the day. I've had a full day. I'm kind of tired. I'm only going to take in so much. And so I figure what I could do is I could watch these at work under those kind of circumstances, leave it a couple of days and then come back and see if I can make the game myself without referring back to the original tutorial. So that's my plan. So I've got this kind of like um, two part plan. So not that one. Uh, where am I? So I'm going to work through. Um, some of the tutorials on here I'm going to so probably the next thing I'm going to do is finish this one so I've done the first I've done the first course there um, I haven't started on this one yet uh, by the way I can really highly recommend this um, he explains things very very clearly um, nice and slow hand holding great stuff really good so highly recommend his stuff he's got a course over here an ultimate guide to creating the RPG game in Unity. This looks absolutely amazing. I am totally going to buy that at some point, but I'm certainly not ready for it yet. So yeah, I'm probably going to do this one first and then oh, I need to close that down. And then I'm going to work through some of these, but what I want to be making are these. So that is my plan to get started. So I have now worked through the second part of this course and I have finished creating the game which he's building there. Um, I've made a few changes to it um, as I was going along. There were a, a few things that I didn't quite like the way he did it. But for the most part, um, it's it's the same thing. So this is the final game. Um, I think it's actually really cool the amount of functionality that's, ah, um, that's been put into here as you can see I of course suck at oh my god I was actually better than this let me just get back over there if you fall through the hole you die so let me try that again oh my god shit that's why I put this ah fuck sorry <laughs> yeah if any of them fall through you die uh, there is a bug I notice if I click try again look at the timer it doesn't reset um, so that is a little bug which I'd like to fix. And the reason for that bug is that it simply counts the time from when the game was started, not for when the scene was reloaded to restart the game. But after having done this course, I am really impressed by how easy it is to do various things in Unity. You know, for example, the, the whole grid system for doing this, the tile mapping, it was just so easy to do just using this tile mapper, just like drawing new platforms on. It was amazing. And then similarly, the um, the canvas for doing the UI, you know, this was really easy to just put together this stuff. Whereas when I was trying to do a UI for my Monogame project, it was such a pain. So, yeah, it's just I am, you know, I, I knew that I knew that this was going to be a lot easier to use Unity rather than um mono game and i'm really glad that i made this decision now and that i didn't just continue on with mono game for say another six months because then i think i would have looked back and then thought i've i've kind of wasted that time so um what's next so today is easter sunday actually and uh, I've got to work today and I thought I was going to get the day off. But unfortunately, it's not a bank holiday in the UK. But I figure I'm going to have a lot of time to watch some videos. So I'm probably going to watch one of these that I mentioned. But also, I have saved a few playlists here of like complete games and things that other people have created. And so I might start watching through some of those things. But before trying to do anything of my own, I think I am going to make some changes to this game. So like I said, I'm going to fix that time issue. And then what I also thought was he had put in 
a system for ammo where you had to have um, you had to basically reload your gun and I didn't like it I found it annoying but what I thought I would do instead is put in a live system so if I just put in a sprite for hearts and then have it so that I'll just play the game again um, at the moment it will end the game if either the sushi fall through the floor as you showed before and also if the character falls in interestingly his his gun is still like stays alive that reminds me of um, if you ever watched uh, terminator when he's at the end and he does the thumbs up as he's uh, melting through the thing anyway um yeah so i thought i could do a life system so that if the sushi fall through you lose a life maybe you start off with like three or five lives or something but then if he falls in the hole that's it it's it's game over so yeah i think it'd be better to just do a few little tweaks to an existing game that i haven't had to build from scratch before trying to build something from scratch but i feel like i've ha i've got enough information from this from this first tutorial to really get started and again i'm really impressed by this particular tutorial so it's a two-parter this second part did go a lot um, a lot faster sorry than the first part which is understandable considering how much he he squeezed in there but it's free um, again highly recommend so yes that is my plan now i'm glad i've switched to unity now so the next thing i'm going to do is make some changes to this and then start preparing to create something of my own so yes thank you very much for watching guys